meta-analysis an hour with metaphor. This is uh, number three, uploading data. So you want to get your data set into R or else you want to use the metaphor library data set. And um, I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Um, metaphor comes with a, a large number of data sets in, in the library. Uh, Fixpower uses dat.bcg um, to um, inoculation uh, medical uh, data set, a uh, famous one in his 2010 paper where he uh, describes the metaphor program in detail. And uh, one of the data sets that he's included in his library is uh, validity of employment interviews. It comes from an article by Mike McDaniel in 1994. And so I'll grab that one and show it to you at some length throughout the series. Okay, um, but when you when you do your own meta-analysis, generally you're going to create your own data set. And I advise you to do this in Microsoft Excel because it's easy to use and it's easy to import. So um, my advice is to create columns for each variable and you want a, a column for the author of the article that you're getting the effect size from. You want a separate column for date and why you want a separate column for date will become clear later. There's going to be things where you're going to want to sort by date, for example. Then you need uh, effect size data. And um, I'm going to be mostly showing you in this series about the hedges approach, so the inverse variance approach to uh, meta-analysis. And um, Bornstein et al. in a 2009 book did a really nice job of um, describing what all this is and how it all works. And... Uh, I'm not going to do that in this um, in this series. I'm just going to show you how to get the information, how to run the programs. So all the theory is covered in this book. I'm going to also teach you a little bit about uh, the Schmidt and Hunter approach that you can do with metaphor, um, but mostly it's going to be the hedges approach. So in your data set, you're going to need an effect size like the uh, correlation coefficient or the standardized mean difference or the odds ratio or something like that. And you're also going to need a sampling variance for whatever that effect size is. So if you have a correlation coefficient, you're going to need the sample size. And if you have a um, standardized mean difference, you're going to want to know uh, the difference in means and the sample sizes for the two groups and so forth. Um, you don't have to have the, the effect size in, you know, pasted into a column. Uh, when you start, you can calculate the effect size and its sampling variance from the information in the uh, Excel sheet. And uh, I'm not going to do that this um, particular video, but I'll show you some of that later. And I will say if you um, if you have comprehensive meta-analysis, which is another uh, program that does a meta-analysis, that's really nice for moving from one effect size to another and for putting in partial information and computing the rest for you. Um, but with Excel, you're going to have to um, figure out some formulas and write those in. Then you want to have moderators, which are, you know, whatever your characteristics of the studies are that you think might explain some of the um, variance that is observed in the effect sizes. You need to have, before you analyze the data, before you run the meta-analysis, for every effect size, you need the same kind of effect size, a common one. So it could be the correlation coefficient, it could be the standardized mean difference, could be the odds ratio, but whatever it is, for all those studies that go into the same meta-analysis, you're going to either have to find, compute, or convert from one kind of effect size into another, and so until they all have one um, common effect size. Okay, so I'm going to show you in a second a um, uh, data set from an article by McLeod. Uh, this is 2007, and the article is about examining the association between parenting and childhood depression. So these are a bunch of studies where they've um, got information about the parents and they've got information about the child, and they correlate the two. So the effect size is going to be a correlation, and uh, we'll get the variance of the effect size from the sample size. Uh, moderator will use is who, who are the parents. Do we have both parents there or just the mother? Um, it's possible to have studies with just a father, but they didn't have any in their review, so there are none in the data set. 
Um, this data set has the author and the year and it has other moderators that are related to either parenting or the depression measures. So they've got things like, um, you know, was it a questionnaire? Was it observations? Well, um, uh, who is the informant? Was it the child? Was it the parent? Was it an observer? So forth. So let's take a look at the data. Here we go. All right. So here's what the data looked like. We've got the author. We have the year. We have the sample size. We have the average age of the sample. We have moms. We have both. Um, these are, um, you know, uh, was it an interview? Was it an observation? Was it a questionnaire? Um, was it the parent? Was it the observer? Was it the child? Um, was there a diagnosis? Um, and so forth about the, uh, and these are the, um, on the depression side. So was it a diagnosis and then characteristics of the, the uh, people who collected the data. Here's the correlation between parenting and um, child depression. And so we're going to need that and the sample size to run the analysis. We've got the same information on each of the studies. I computed um, the R to Z transformation here because that's the thing I want to analyze. Um, the program will do this for you. I just did it because I like to have all the data in front of me. And this is the variance of the R to Z transformation. I also computed that, but the program will do this for you. Okay, so now I've got the um, data set. I am going to file save as. I'm going to put it on my desktop. There it goes. It's on my desktop. Okay, so now I'm going to minimize this. Another thing you need to know is um, in my data sets, I usually have a date on the first page, and then I have information about the, the, the citation and the coding of the, the, um, the columns in the second sheet. Uh, if you subset your data, you can have multiple sheets as well that you might want to use for um, analysis. All right, so I'm going to minimize this. I uh, did the example data set. All right, so now... Um, to read in that file, I want to read it in to be able to use it. I'm going to invoke our, uh, recall the library, XLSX, and then I'm going to read in the data. So um, the command in R is to, you have, give a name for the data set that you want, and you say read.xlsx, and then you give it a uh, path name. So you have to tell this program where the data are, and it will grab it and push it into the data set. So I'm going to read McLeod, that, that data that you just saw, um, and print it out. And then I'm going to call up a, um, a library database that's built into Metaphor if I <clears throat> am able to do the things I want to do. So let's find applications. And I know the R. All right, now we have R. Now I need a library for Metaphor. Library. Metaphor. And it's got it. Library XLSX. And it's got it. Now I'm ready to read in uh, McLeod for data. So McLeod, the ode, da. And I've got a less than and a dash for uh, arrow for gets. Uh, read. Dot, dot xlsx. All right, now I need the path of the file to uh, read, and so I'm going to go and look for it. I'm going to Finder. I'm going to my desktop. There's my cloud. I want to get info. I have a path here. Then I'm going to edit, copy. Now I'm going back to R. All right, so I need that path name. I need the quotes. Edit, paste. And now I need to put in the file name, McLeod, no, uh, 2007.xlsx. Get on the other side of the quotes. So I need a sheet. Name capital N A M M E equals another quote uh, data with a capital D. 
Uh, the McLeod 2007SXLSXR, let's see if it takes it. And it ran, incredibly enough. Uh, if you make a mistake, if you're on the command line and you misspelled something here, you'd push the up key on your keyboard and then you go fix whatever the mistake was. All right, so there's McLeod.MCLEODDAT to see what it is. And here's the data. You come up. And here's McLeod Dat. We've got author year, sample size, age, moderators. So you can see the data underneath that. We've got more moderators. Here's the correlations 26. The Z transformers of about 27. And here's the variance for Z. All right, so that's all that stuff. And if you don't have data to read in, you need want to be working with built in data sets. Dat. Dat. Mc. M C D A N I E L 1994. All right, here's Daniel's data. So this is a validation study for uh, employment interviews. And you've got study number, 123 people, correlation is a big fat zero. It's job-related interview, and it's structured. So uh, even if you don't have your own data and you're learning how to use this program, there are a bunch of built-in data sets, some of which have to be interesting to you. So I read McLeod. I printed it. I printed the built-in uh, library data set Dat McDaniel. So you can actually do things uh, with uh, um, learning the program even if you don't have data at the moment. All right. And uh, lastly, instructions from YouTube uh, for reading Excel file into R. Here's another way that somebody else who's put together a uh, tutorial on how you read data into R.